in the 125s. Can anyone stop the record-breaking rampage of Pro Circuit's Ricky Carmichael? Stay tuned. Round 7 of AMA Motocross is next. everyone, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Combs with you from Unadilla Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. It is the 30th anniversary of this great old track for round number seven of AMA Motocross. The 125s are at the gate, and it is truly an experience to run on this Unadilla track. It is a privilege to race here at Unadilla. It's so beautiful, so much history here. The first few times they race here, though, it rains, so looks like they won't have that problem today. It's a little damp here in uh, New Berlin, New York today as we take a look at Nick Way surveying the situation along with his mechanic and there's Michael Brandes. Brandes trying to move up in the points in a 125 and speaking of points, the Suzuki point standings. Ricky Carmichael leads by 19 points over Talon Bull and Brock Sellers in good position in third. Let's go down to Davey. Well, this is it, the capital of American motocross, Unadilla, on its 30th year for the AMA National Mazda Motocross Championship Series. Old school motocross, big hills, rocks, ruts, this is the way it's supposed to be. Even Ricky Carmichael, the undisputed king of the 125 class, has prepared himself to get peppered with rocks and roots to the other riders. He's got the protective gear on the radiator shrouds on his hands. He's ready for war, and he's got to be the favorite here in the first 125 moto. No doubt about it, Davey. After winning five of the last six races, Ricky Carmichael is all set to go. Let's take a look now at the track map. Well, you got a cement starting pad for one thing. That's the only thing new here at Unadilla. Why change a good thing? This track has it's got a superb layout ever since the very beginning. We want to show you from the rider's point of view. This is dropping down into the gravity cavity. You make a left-hand corner, it drops about 90 feet down into the valley. Right back up and out. A lot of air time right there. That's everyone's favorite place to show off for the crowd in the last lap. Let's look at the starting grid. Of course, Carmichael and Volan in second spot trying to make a challenge. He's the only one to beat Carmichael this year. Michael Brandes, Casey Lytle, Brock Sellers of the FMF crew, Nathan Ramsey of Pro Circuit. And taking a look at the rest of the rundown of the 40 rider field, it's Michael Craig's second race back, this time on a Kawasaki. Also, Ron Cotta is back in the field after a long layoff. David Pingree, his second race after coming back from a broken shoulder. And no Casey Johnson on the starting line here today. He hurt his back at Red Bud and is not back to action yet for the Yamaha of Troy team. Starting to rev up, starting to get nervous. There's Buddy Antonez, number 54, the Arena Cross champion, 25. Nathan Ramsey, Nick Way, Michael Brandis, and Brock Sellers as the 32nd board is up. And we're just about set for our opening moto from this great track in New Berlin, New York. Any second now, the gate drops. And the 125 number one motor is underway as we look at the back of Carmichael and get a little idea of what that roost is really like. Nathan Ramsey, number 25, Pro Circuit, gets the whole shot award. Brock Sellers in good position. So is Ricky Carmichael. Talent Bowen is one that got the slow start. It looks like he's in about 13th position as Ricky Carmichael starts to make a move on his Pro Circuit teammate. Whoa! Hang on as they go down to their gravity cavity. You can see they put a lot of water down on the racetrack. The first lap, everyone's getting splashed. Carmichael trying so hard to get by. In third place right there, Fonseca already covered with mud. Coming up quickly in fourth is the privateer, Matt Walker, as we take a look. Oh, Talon Bolin is down. Oh, Talon Bolin gets hit and run over. Talon Bolin, second in the points, still can't get out of there. Where's the flagman? Nobody's on top of that. It's a blind section, and Talon got plowed three times. That's Talon uh, got up and then he got hit by a bike coming through the air, went down and then got hit again and then run over. That is so rare. You just hardly ever see that happen. Everyone's so heads up, but no one realized he was on the other side of that knoll there and he just got plowed right in the body. One of the worst accidents so far this year. We'll get back to uh, check his condition as soon as we can as Nathan Ramsey is trying to still hold off Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael in pretty much the position he wants to be in, David. He has not had a whole shot all season long, but is able to get good starts and make the pass and take over the lead early. 
pulls the tear off, does it right before they get to the section that's been pretty heavily watered. Probably getting tired of getting splashed, wants to just get out clear. He has no idea what's gone on behind him with Bowling. He will soon when they come around, though, because they Bowling is not off the ground yet. They're being very careful, the medical personnel, in moving Talon Bowling. And so, all kinds of action to open our first photo of the 125s. We'll be right back. AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 1999 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. Welcome back to 125 Action as we take a replay of a violent accident. Talon Bolin getting run over after blasted in midair. Probably one of the worst accidents I've seen in motocross action. I'd have to go back to maybe that time when uh, Damon Bradshaw uh, came over a hill and hit Brian Manley right in the, in the midsection. Same type of deal, a blind section on the racetrack. Manley was down and Bradshaw just plowed right into his stomach. And then who can forget the time that uh, Tim Ferry crashed over a hill, a big jump, got up and walked right into Denny Stevenson coming off the jump. Anyway, we're back to action for second place. Ernesto Fonseca, number 100 of Yamaha of Troy, making the move on Nathan Ramsey. Ramsey not giving it up easily, though, as they come over the big hill. He's still fighting for it. He's still in pretty good position here to put some pressure on Fonseca. He just made a little mistake, got wide in the back. Whoa, you see how slick it is? Good save right there. And then you come right back into a roost of pebbles, if not rocks here at Unadilla. That turn is just about impossible to get stopped for, and then they watered it. <laughs> Makes it really tough the first few laps, but it doesn't take long for this track to work up a nice groove. Nathan Ramsey picking things up after winning the 125 West Supercross and then having a, a relatively slow start in the motocross season. Well, it looks like he's getting back in the groove now. Well, starts have been the main thing. You know, having just a little bit of luck and some better starts. What a relief. We just saw Talon Volan waving his arms. Let's go down to Davey now, who's with Bob Bourne. I'm down here with FMF Honda team manager Bobby Moore. Bob, what a crushing blow to the title hopes, but first and foremost, how is Talon? Well, he doesn't sound too good right now. He's, his neck and back, everything is okay, but he's, uh, he's spitting up blood, and he's, he's having a hard time breathing right now, so that's what we're going concerned on. They're going to go to the hospital, take an x-ray. He's, he's conscious, he's focused, everything's fine. He just said he's, uh, he's having a hard time breathing. Well, in one respect, it's, uh, it's an encouraging report. Uh, David Bailey, that uh, his back and neck and, and uh, limbs are fine. But of I course, think that, uh, I mean, that's an internal type deal where he just got hit so hard right in the body. You know, that may have just kind of jumbled things up a little bit inside. And that's obviously a concern, but yeah, it is nice to know that he was able to move around. He was conscious. Nathan Ramsey getting passed again in the same place. Michael Brandis, number 49 of Primal Suzuki, getting by him. Michael Brandis has been looking strong lately. We take a look at it again. Ramsey on the outside. Just getting caught a little bit too wide. Brandis right down the inside takes advantage. That might not be the best line when you're running by yourself across the inside like that because you can't sweep both those corners. But definitely if you got somebody behind you, I think Ramsey's figured that out now. Well, Brandis is getting up at some very, very good speed. Ramsey having a hard time keeping up right there. And Matt Walker to the inside. Making another pass on Ramsey. He's to hug that inside a little bit. These guys are eating him alive, coming down the inside, taking the line away from him. Matt Walker, a privateer out of the state of Georgia. He's had a seventh overall and a ninth place overall. Most people think he's got the speed, just needs the experience to move up the ladder. It's the best way to get the experience right here, get up there and dice it with the big boys, try to run near the front. Our Suzuki top five, Carmichael and Fonseca, one and two. And Matt Walker's got his sights on moving up there. He had a third in the first moto at Southwick. Let's go down to Davy Coombs, who's with Matt's mechanic. I'm down here with a very excited Jason Easel. This is Matt Walker's mechanic. Man, Matt is flying out there. Yeah, we've been working hard all week. He's been putting in a lot of long motos, and it's finally paying off. He's getting good starts and riding with Ricky Carmichael. He's got to help him. Yeah, we've been working on cement starts all week, and it's really paying off. All right, get back in there. Thanks. 
I think Matt's, uh, Matt Walker's mechanic is as excited, if not more, than Matt is right about now. He does look at it. He's breathing just about as hard as the riders are. That's cool. You want to see that kind of emotion. These guys, it matters a lot for them to be up front. Walker now putting the heat up. Fonseca, what a move to the inside. Fonseca comes right back. Back and forth we go against Yamaha against Yamaha. It's a great idea by Matt Walker to come down there and try to take the line away. The only way he could have really made that stick was to be a little bit of a jerk about it and kind of just park in his line. I don't think he wants to deal with the ramifications of that later on in the race. Stefan Roncada moving up to the top ten as we take a look at our rundown in the upper left corner. And right now the battle is for fourth, third and fourth place. Fonseca and Matt Walker. And Ramsey sticking pretty close now to the inside. Walker shows him a tire. Got that inside line again. That's the corner that uh, Robbie Raynard made famous, uh, catching up with Ricky Carmichael with a blitzing move. Out of gravity cavity, Matt Walker staying low, taking over third in front of Fonseca. Ricky Carmichael is still our leader here in our first photo. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. The rolling hills of upstate New York. Our first moto, Ricky Carmichael in the 125s is starting to pull away. As usual, the guy's only won 10 of the 12 motos so far this year. He's had four sweeps on the season. That means he's won both motos in an event. Let's check in with Davey Coombs, who's with Chad Watts. Wow, Chad, just like that, you guys went from a points chase to suddenly you're sitting comfortable with the unfortunate crash for Talon Boland. But I want to ask you, are you going to tell Ricky that Boland's out? No, I mean, I really I feel bad for Boland, him and the whole FMF crew. I mean, he's riding really good. It's a shame to see him go down like that. And hopefully he's all right and he'll be back the next race. But I'm not going to tell Ricky. I mean, that's no concern right now. I'll let him know after the race. Usually right on the board, race the track. No better time than today. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good way to approach it, David Bailey. Well, there's his mother looking on, too. Uh, Ricky, that is. And, you know, I mean, it would just alter his concentration a little bit. He might start focusing on the wrong things. Right now, everything's working the way it should, so keep him focused straight ahead. Everybody in a position to win a title has gone down and been injured at one time or another in this sport. And no one likes to see it happen, even if it's your brightest competitor. The battle for fourth is on. Nathan Ramsey still in the hunt to move up along with his teammate Nick Way, trying to get around Ernesto Fonseca in fourth. Ernesto getting better starts in this motocross right now, but having problems holding on to good positions. Nick Way just flying around the outside right there, gets by his teammate, and it looks like he's going to get around Fonseca next here in a hurry if he keeps riding with that much intensity. And you're right, Fonseca hasn't really impressed, I think, some people, and even me, really, to the extent I thought he might with the way he rode Supercross. You know what's good about it, though, is that he still approaches every race with the same intensity. Here's Michael Brandis in the battle for second place with Matt Walker. Walker regains the second place position. Number 80 versus number 49. Walker, the privateer on a Yamaha. Walker's impressing me. I like the way he learned his lesson, making that pass. He tried to make that work on Fonseca. Tried it again on Brandis. That time, he really made the line work for him. He didn't cut so tight. The pass stuck, and maybe that's because he's been riding with Carmichael and Lusk a little bit during the week. Either way, this kid is really starting to find his speed. It was interesting about how uh, four or five riders got together with Ezra Lusk and Ricky Carmichael for workouts, and uh, Matt Walker was one of them. They said it makes it a lot more fun, but it also makes practice a lot more competitive. I think a mistake a lot of guys make is they don't practice the way they need to race. You need to put a lot more intensity in your practice, and that's tough to do by yourself all the time. And a guy like Matt Walker, who's just a little bit off the speed of Carmichael, during the week, these guys a lot closer. Races change everything, and you find guys that don't have pressure going a lot faster during the week, and that pushes Ricky as well. Nick Way right on the back rubber of Ernesto Fonseca. And Nathan Ramsey, his teammate waiting right behind him. Don't forget, for the latest in motorcycle news and highlights, join us for Moto World, coming up each week on ESPN2. Nick Way still going to work on Fonseca. You see he's changing lines everywhere. 
partially trying to stay out of that roost and also to keep Fonseca guessing. On the outside, a good sweeping move by Nick Way, but Fonseca doesn't give it up easily as they go down into the valley. That's where he got his teammate the lap before. Worked perfect on Fonseca that time. Now, if Ramsey didn't learn. Here comes Fonseca right back on Nick Way. Oh, this is a great battle within the race. And a little block pass. Let's see if Way can make it stick this time. I thought he was going to make it stick already. It just shows the, the fighting spirit that Fonseca has. He's not just going to give it up. Ramsey, a very nice calculated block pass on Fonseca. Uh-oh, Jason McCormick now with a banner in his rear wheel. Had to stop losing the rear brake probably. And so Jason McCormick, more bad luck for number 36 of Planet Honda. Oh. Ramsey getting a little bit out of shape there. That's what's so tricky about this Unadilla soil. It looks nice and loamy, and you got about a foot of cushion. It's that dark, rich dirt, but it's a rock base. Sometimes you get down into that, and it's really slippery. He just found one of those spots. That is pretty ruddy today. They had some amateurs riding on it yesterday, and uh, they did a lot of grooming over the evening hours, and the riders were quite impressed with the work that was put into this track before the main event got underway. Let's take another look now. Nathan Ramsey, number 25. He gets on the power, starts to get a little sideways right there, and then catches a little a lip or a little edge in the ground. It sets him up straight. Lucky he didn't high side. I don't think Ramsey's lines are coming together. I think his speed is there. He wants to be up front battling with these guys, but I don't think his line choice has really been the best so far. Ricky Carmichael is checked out. Matt Walker in second with Brandis, starting to pressure him in third. We'll be right back. Hardeckman, David Bailey, and Davey Combs from the Unadilla Valley Sports Center. 125 action first moto. Ricky Carmichael is our leader. This is Stefan Roncata's third race. After coming off the injured list, Stefan had three straight Supercross podium appearances. It was looking like a contender for the season, but a nasty wrist injury took the win right out of Stefan's sails, but he's back on track now. I thought it wasn't going to be that bad, but it took me out for three months. It was really bad, actually, so uh, I've been uh, working on it a lot, you know, doing a lot of therapy and stuff like that, and uh, it's doing way better. I know it's up to, like, maybe 90%. I still uh, have to ride with uh, if tape on my wrist, you know, because it still hurts, but uh, it's doing way better, and at least I could race, so I'm pretty happy I'm back. It's been a long time I've been racing, so I'm glad to be back. Stefan, whose contract's up after this season, wants to make a statement before time runs out. The only thing I can do is, uh, is do the best I can. I've been working a lot, weightlifting and uh, riding bicycle and stuff like that. I just want to do the best I can, get a good ride next year, and uh, that's the only thing I can do right now. You know, I'm just going to go there, ride 100%, and never give up. That's it. Here's our leader, Ricky Carmichael, the pro circuit. Cruising along right now here in the opening moto. Yep, just cruising along, pulling away about two seconds to left. <laughs> you know, this is, before we went to break, I talked about the lines of Nathan Ramsey. I, I think he's got the speed and the talent to go fast, but I, I don't think that he has the best lines out there. Watch Carmichael, the way he flows all his lines together. He ends up on the outside, which sets him up good for this uphill. A little slip there with his foot off the peg, but all of his lines come together. He never finds himself in a place where he's got to make an abrupt change in speed. Here's where the battle is, and it's for second place right now. Matt Walker trying to hold off Michael Brandis. Brandis with good speed. Just outguns him on the sweep. Michael Brandis moves into second place. Boy, their lines crossed. That was close. Walker coming across. Just missing his back tire by a couple of inches. He knew he had it, but sometimes it gets close like that. That was an oucher coming off that big jump. Matt Walker trying to hold on to Michael Brandis. Brandis won podium on the year. That was a third place overall at Bud's Creek. Back to Nathan Ramsey, currently in fifth place. You see the red bike of Brock Sellers, FMF number 27. Brock just got by Chris Gossler. Gossler coming off a real bad heel injury in both feet, actually. But Nathan Ramsey. 
trying desperately to hold on to fifth place as Sellards picking up ground on him. Sellards with three podiums. Back-to-back -back second place finishes at Southwick and Bud's Creek. The final lap, though, is underway for the 125 first moto. You see on the, the fork guard, it's actually the, the little protector that protects the disc has been kind of flopping there this whole race. I don't know that Ricky has even noticed it, but didn't seem to affect him anyway. Breeze and across, the checkered flag waving more energetically than Ricky Carmichael is working as he comes across, maybe sa saving that energy for the second moto as he already realizes that's next on the agenda. Ricky Carmichael, Brandison, Walker, the top three. Matt Walker, a wonderful moto. Let's go down now to uh, Davey Combs, who's in the winner's circle. Ricky, first of all, congratulations on the moto win. Way to gut it out. Good start right to front. But more importantly, your primary contender for the title, Talon Bowen, out first lap. Uh, I don't know what happened. I came around, and I seen a red bike down, and I, I wasn't sure if it's him. I didn't see him behind the pack. Uh, I don't know what happened, but... Uh, I was trying to hold my own out there. There was guys flying out there. You know, Matt Walker, I practiced with him every day, and uh, he told me he was going to win a moto before the end of the year. And uh, I'll tell you why he was closing the gap. And uh, I don't know what happened. He kind of fell off the pace, but uh, my Kawasaki Bridgestone tires hooked up out of the gate and uh, got me up there pretty good. Michael Brandis with a fine performance, tying his best moto finish of the year with second place. He got that second place at Mount Morris. Let's go right back down to Davey. All right, Michael, good, tough ride. It was a solid second. You had to have been surprised by Matt Walker. He was up there early. Uh, definitely, for sure. Uh, I knew he's got some good speed, and he was up there. I was just wondering how long he was going to run the pace, and he was holding it pretty good the whole race. We were going back and forth there for a little while. It was kind of fun. Uh, then uh, towards the end of the race, I got by him and moved out to a little bit of lead. It was a good ride. It looked to me like you were going the same speed as Ricky was toward the end of the moto. Better start. You think you can do it? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, I definitely would love to get off to a good start with him, especially run with him up front. But when you don't start with him, uh, you're not going to catch him. Congratulations on second. Thanks a lot. You know, I like to thank Primal Impulse, Bill's Pipe, Shift. Uh, definitely my mechanic, uh, Charlie, for helping out. Good friends, Matt Walker, who took a third in the first moto on the right. Ricky Carmichael, who won the moto on the left. Discussing experiences as they practice together all week long. We see Nathan Ramsey, number 25. He's concerned, but he had a good run. Taking another look at the racetrack here. Starting to shape up nice. The first moto for these guys, the track had just been water. I know, I, these guys hate that in the beginning. You get all covered with mud. This is another section. The corkscrew down the hill, just about impossible to get stopped. Try to find some kind of a berm, some way to make a pivot, and it's a hill climb. Let's get an update on Volant's condition. Right before the start of the second 125 motor, we found out that, in fact, Talon Volant does have three broken ribs. Fortunately, his lung is not punctured. He will be not riding for the rest of the afternoon here at Unadilla. That, in effect, is Ricky Carmichael a huge lead in the point standings going into the second moto. Volant had a great year up till now. Finally, bad luck struck him. Volant, the only rider to put consistent pressure on Carmichael with three second-place finishes, two third-place finishes and a win, the only person to win against Carmichael this year. Ready for the gate to drop, and oh, Carmichael wheeling off that cement block. Nathan Ramsey, another good start, but from the outside, number 19, that's Michael Craig. Craig gets the whole shot. Whoa, there goes Ron Cotta. Ron Cotta in the middle pack after a seventh place finish in the opening moto. Looks like he'll be getting out of there about in last place if he gets up at all. And Ricky Carmichael spins out in that slick area. He almost went down that same place the first moto. It was a lot slicker where they watered it. He does this time. So now we're going to see a heck of a battle. These guys are going to have to come from last just about. Oh, my goodness. Carmichael, as we counted, is in 35th. Oh, midway goes flying through the air. Looked like a gymnast coming off a trampoline. I've never seen anything like that. I don't even know what to say. Obviously, he's not hurt. He got so much rebound off that bike, he just went flipping through the air. Head over heels, Nick Way trying to get that pro circuit. Kawasaki restarted another look. Oh, geez, I, I still don't know what to say. All I can figure is, he hit a braking bump, getting down in there before the face of that jump. The bike compressed, and he was already over the front end, and when the suspension rebounded, he was already on the takeoff, and it just launched him, to say the least. Michael Craig in the lead all alone because number 49 on the Primal Suzuki, Michael Brandis, who had a good shot at the overall, 
went down. Seem off balance all the way down that straightaway. And what a, these are the opportunities those guys look for. Somebody like Brandis, when Carmichael goes down the first lap, finally has a real good opportunity and goes down himself. Well, this start gives Michael Craig a good shot at his best moto of the year as his uh, is his second race back. McCormick, number 36, battling with Nathan Ramsey. Jason McCormick out of Vancouver, Washington. Another decent start for Ramsey. See if this time he can hang on to that position. Just kind of worked his way backwards the first moto. He wasn't riding terribly. I just I still believe his lines weren't coming together. I'm sure he had time to think about that between motos and talk with some of the spotters. McCormick had a horrible time of it in 34th for no points in the first moto. Our leader, Michael Craig, number 19, Nathan Ramsey in second, Jason McCormick in third. And another advantage these guys have is they're pulling quite a lead from the pack. Not just the fact that Ricky Carmichael slipped out in that second turn. Look how close they all are. This is a great battle for the lead. You don't need Carmichael right now. It's good enough. But I guarantee you he's going to join this <laughs> battle somewhere during the moto. Just too much talent, too much confidence. Here's the move by Jason McCormick. Around that very famous tree here at Unadilla. McCormick looking to make the move. Makes it look easy. So far, Jason McCormick takes over the lead. The first time this year that Jason's been able to lead the race. With Craig, Ramsey, Lytle, and Sellers in our top five. We've got a lot of time left in this second moto for the 125s. A lot of time for Ricky Carmichael to see what he can do. And coming from 35th, many of the fans are just eyeballing him. It's unfortunate for Jason McCormick, who's riding so well out in front, that most of the fans are watching Ricky Carmichael to see if he can come up through the field. Michael Craig testing him once again. McCormick, Craig, Ramsey, Lytle, Sellers, Fonseca. No sign of Ricky Carmichael in the top 10. His buddy Matt Walker at night. We'll be back with more action from the 125s. Just joining us, you missed a lot. Take a look at this. Whoa, Nick Way. Rag dolls it pretty well. That was just amazing. He just gets right up and runs away from it. Here's, this one was different. Yes, he didn't get up and run away from this. Talon Bowling, a hit and run victim, and then run over. Has gone to the hospital, has got a couple of broken ribs. It's hard to believe that's all that happened. These guys are pretty tough. They wear all the chest protectors underneath their jerseys, and, and uh, pretty fortunate as well. Well, one rider rode right over his helmet. It says a lot for the safety gear in today's racing. One of these guys don't like to wear a chest protector because it just restricts their movement too much, but then in a situation like that, you really want one on. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to ride Unadilla either without a chest protector. Too many rocks flying. I did it, though, without a chest protector just because I, I wanted the motivation to get the whole shot, and I wanted the motivation of getting peppered from the guy in front of me to get past him. It didn't always work. <laughs> Back Battling for seventh place is Michael Brandis after going down. He was in great position for an overall possible victory here at Unadilla when he went down. Ricky Carmichael will already has entered the top ten and has passed Michael Brandis currently in seventh place. So there goes any hopes of the overall. Looks like he's getting a lot of wheel spin coming out of that corner, just having a tough time hooking up. Ernesto Fonseca is Carmichael's next target. Now, Ricky's really settled down. It was only a slide out. Look at Ricky, just takes advantage of a little wide turn by Fonseca, easily gets by. Carmichael just doesn't wait. Doesn't give you an opportunity to figure out what to do to hold him off. He just makes a pass so quick, it's over. Jason McCormick is having the ride of his life out in front, but here is the battle, and the battle is for second place. Ramsey, number 25, and number 19, and that's Michael Craig. Craig's still hanging in pretty good. From that hole shot, he's a lot cleaner than Ramsey. 
They can read his number when he comes by. Surprised these guys have been able to stay out here this long because I don't think their pace is really that blazing fast. But they have managed to hold off everyone so far. Ramsey seems to get the edge on Craig, but coming up from behind now is Casey Lytle. Yamaha of Troy, entry number 33. The attrition today, and especially in the second moto, Lytle goes for the inside. Oh. Almost puts Craig down. Took that front tire of Craig, and Craig had to react very quickly before saving it. The, the talent pool here in this second moto is really thinned out. It's actually going to make for a pretty good race up front. Rock Sellard starting to make a move now on the FMF Honda number 27. So many guys equal. Sellard's got a good shot at the podium if he can uh, pick up the action here after a sixth place in the opening moto. Michael Craig right in front of him, and uh, you can see there the encouragement from the sidelines to the FMF rider to catch up with him. Craig with a little front-end wash right there, trying to hold that inside. It actually becomes kind of an off-camber as you start up that hill. Got a little off balance, lost all of his speed, and Sellers was able to go right around him on the outside. The outside's been a faster line, it's a longer distance, so you gotta come in there with a lot more speed, but it seems to have worked out for most of the guys so far today. So far, no Ricky Carmichael up in this pack of riders as we see Brock Sellers and Michael Craig. Sellers getting around Craig. But Carmichael is on the move. The interesting factor, though, I think so far is that our leader, Jason McCormick, has kept up his speed. He has not relaxed a bit. You always like to try to get a good enough drive up that hill. You can jump that little plateau on the top and land on the downside. On a 125, if you mess up at the bottom, it just seems like it takes forever to get up that hill. You can lose a couple of seconds just by making a small mistake in the corner. Casey Lytle taking on Nathan Ramsey. Just can't get quite close enough to show him a wheel. I don't think he needs to right now, though. Casey knows he's there. and He's already starting to change his line just a little bit, a couple of places. The banner's laying across the racetrack right there. Suzuki stopwatch. Let's check it out from first place. Second place, he's got a seven-second lead. As we're going to go back to fifth place now, Ricky Carmichael, 13.67 seconds behind. Ricky Carmichael taking advantage of Michael Craig immediately. That's what I say. He just doesn't wait. Jumps that plateau. Look how fast he went through that corner. That might be the fastest anyone's got in that corner all day, including the 250s. He's motivated right now. He doesn't care who's missing from the class. He's still going to give it everything he's got. Check out the points race in the 250s and Ricky Carmichael in the 125s in the three remaining races. We'll be right back. For this week's Suzuki flashback, we take time to look back at the 250 National from Unadilla in 1996. In Moto 1, the win went to number 2, Team Kawasaki's Jeff Emig after a long battle with his teammate number 5, Ryan Hughes. Team Suzuki rider number 16, Greg Albertine, went down early, but got by Hughes with only two laps to go later in the moto for second place. Moto 2 would see the same Jeff Emig getting the whole shot and the lead until he went down in the sand section, driving his wheel in the burn. Damon Bradshaw would also get tossed off his bike, while Greg Albertine would pass to move up a spot. Greg then got by number six Honda-mounted Larry Ward for second place, and with that pass, Albertine would use his 2-2 moto finishes for his first overall win of the year, and his first win in the United States. Quite a bit of talent on that podium as we take a look at Brock Sellers, number 27. Jason McCormick still out in front. Brock Sellers trying to chase down Casey Lytle here at the Unadilla Valley Sports Center. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs bringing you the action. And there is Ricky Carmichael finally getting into the scene with tremendous smooth quickness over this very rough Unadilla track. 
Sellers takes advantage of Lytle with the inside line right there. He can sense Carmichael coming up, wants to try to put somebody between himself and Ricky, but I don't know if that's going to last very long. Yeah, Casey Lytle backs off a little bit, gives uh, Carmichael some room, but he didn't have very much room there. The battle for fourth is on. Let's check in with Davey Combs, who I'm sure is checking RC's progress from the mechanics area. Davey. Man, you're right. Ricky is on fire. Yeah, he is. Some got up his rear, I guess. I mean, he don't even like this track, but he's riding it. What about that huge leap out of gravity cabby? It looked like he must have gone 70 feet. Better him than me. <laughs> Chad readily admits he's never been a great uh, motocrosser. No, he's good in the interviews, though. He sure is, he and he's says, darn good tuning that bike. Says what's on his mind. These guys have a great relationship, and they joke around and have a lot of fun. You've got to be able to have some fun out there. It can't just be all business. There's got to be a mixture, and they seem to have found the right combination. You know, right now, with Ricky having the good times, uh, you have, tend have a tendency to forget the frustrations and the uh, tough times that the two went through together on the Supercross season with Ricky was on the 250 and had so many problems staying upright. Doesn't really like this racetrack a whole lot. And the way he got passed by Robbie Raynard here, doesn't particularly like the rocks very much, but I'll bet you he'll have a little bit different opinion about it after today, because he seemed to have found a way to win the battle with this racetrack. Trying hard now to get around Brock Sellers. Oh. And on the speed shot, Ricky Carmichael just leaves him behind. Rock going wide. Ricky looks back at him and gets the traction up the hill. See the way he came out of that corner? He knew he was going to have a tough time keeping the front end down. He actually stood up over the front end a little bit. He wasn't even sitting down. Just so he didn't have to back out of the throttle and keep the front end down. Lap traffic wisely getting out of the way. Let's take another look. This almost looks like the same kind of pass he put on John Dowd. Except put John he went Dowd right. Dowd, yes. Yeah. And he looks over at him right here. He's kind of wondering. I don't think he was being cocky right there. He's just looking over to see what Sellers had in mind. That move that uh, David Bailey was talking about was last year when John Dowd was in front of him and Ricky Carmichael did a, a T-bone effect. Kind of surprised Dowdy. With Carmichael in third, we got Michael Craig back to sixth and Brandis in the top ten, but barely. As we take a look at the field summary, and the two pro circuit guys going at it. Ramsey has picked up the pace a little bit, this moto. But he is going to get schooled in a minute by Carmichael. If he keeps riding the way he's been. Watch Ricky to this outside. Oh, what great speed. I mean, that's a pass. Ramsey wants to go back and do that section. What, what happened there? If he doesn't switch that outside now, I'll be surprised because that was just amazing. Five miles an hour difference in speed through there. Ricky Carmichael now currently in second place, and he still has a ways to go to catch Jason McCormick. McCormick has kept his speed up very well throughout this big lead that he's established. But he's got the fastest 125 rider in the world oh. with no one between them. Beautiful, the way he just laid into that corner. Gassed it just a little bit. Why, wow, look at this pass again. And Carmichael's just flat out, probably fourth gear. Ramsey has to be feeling kind of bad about that. And he didn't really go through there and make, do anything wrong or make a mistake. It's just Carmichael was that much better. This has been McCormick's ride of his career in this second moto of 125 action. Well, that is the good news. The bad news is he's got number one, Chasen. It's only a matter of time. He's enjoying a pretty nice lead right now. I'm sure this is all fun for him. And even if Carmichael does get around, it's still a great moto. But it seems inevitable that Carmichael is going to make up that distance. Brock Sellers still not giving up on Nathan Ramsey in their battle for third. Ramsey has fought a lot better this moto. The weather has been exceptional here at Unadilla. It has created a pretty good surface on the track. There goes Sellers. Cutting to the inside. Ramsey going wide. Ramsey gets the door shut on him right there. 
Now, when he started into that corner wide, that was the mistake. You got somebody pretty close to you, even if they, you don't like the line on the inside, you still got to get in there and protect it. And Carmichael catch up with Mark Farming. Then can he pass him? It's all coming up next. We're back at Unadilla. Second motor of the 125s. Ricky Carmichael has pulled up to within striking distance of the leader, Jason McCormick. And for those of you who are joining us late, Ricky Carmichael won the first moto, but he slipped in the second turn in the second moto and has to has had to fight back through the field, almost the entire field. We had him as far back as 35th place at one point. He's battled through the field, picked up three and four seconds a lap on riders like the leader here, McCormick. Look at that line around the outside. He just gobbled up 10 bike lanes right there. I was kind of wondering at the time, Ricky Carmichael slicing back and forth. Carmichael to the inside, checking things out. Cool hand loop. Carmichael gets the traction up the hill and he has the lead for the first time in moto number two. I, back to my thought, I was thinking at the time when he went down, is a 34 rider handicap enough for Ricky Carmichael? Apparently not. And right here, not being very nice, just goes in there and makes sure that pass sticks. He tried to do it at the top of the hill. McCormick squared him right back off. Said, nope, you're not going to get me that way. And you got him right back in the next corner. And look at the lead he already enjoyed. The guy has just been awesome today. The fans are going crazy. McCormick has not panicked, however. He still has, well, he has second place almost nailed down. He kept his speed up while Ricky Carmichael was chasing him. And these two guys are just all alone out there. Yeah, I'm anxious to hear what Chad Watts has to say this time as uh, Davey Coombs is with him now in the mechanics area. Chad, I got to ask you, does that surprise you at all? Did you know he was going to get the lead? Uh, honestly, the first part of the moto, I didn't know. I didn't know exactly what the gap was. And then about 15 minutes ago, when he got into second, his pace was enough to, you know, lap from time-wise to catch him. So it worked out. Well, Chad Watts getting into mathematics this time instead of the humorous speech book. <laughs> you can hear the Hill people going nuts every time Carmichael comes past their spot. They love this guy. They like to see a charge like that. And trust me. It's just like you said, Art, they were going to be paying a lot more attention to Carmichael's ride through the pack than the leader. Danny Smith dropping it in the mechanics area. Whoa! Drops it again. That's a really tricky place to even stand next to the bike, especially for a shorter guy like Danny Smith. Pretty off camber and rocky. Talk about off camber. <laughs> and Ricky looking back just to double check. Does he put the foot on the peg until he gets up, up over the top of the hill? Well, the way he passed McCormick, he just probably wants to make sure he's got enough of a gap. McCormick can't come back and do it to him in his final corner right here. The checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Not an unusual sight this year. He's seen it 12 times in 14 motos. This is the fifth sweep of the season for him. And it's his sixth overall victory. Jason McCormick putting up a good battle. Brock Sellers in third in Moto2. Let's go down to Davy now with our winner. But it sure was interesting. Wow, what an unbelievable comeback. I tell you what, I had to ride my butt off. Man, I crashed in that first turn, and uh, man, I tell you what, I rode my tail off. And I haven't had to row like that in a while. I mean, my Kawasaki Bridgestone tires was hooking up out there, and uh, you know, Fox, Oakley, Alpine Star, Bell Helmets, and I'll tell you what, man, I, uh, I had to work my butt off. <laughs> we were watching your mechanic, Chad Watts, the whole time. He kept saying, he's going to come, he's going to come. He was taking the splits on the other riders. He was right in the end. You got him. You rode like a champion. Yeah, I rode good, and uh, I'll tell you what, I had to work for it, and uh, these guys were hauling butt. Jason was on the gas, and, uh, you know, I had uh, got stuck behind Brock for a little bit, and I was able to get by him, and I had a clear track. The championship looks pretty good right now. You picked up 50 points on Talon Volan, but that record's still out there. Three more to go. 
Yeah, you know, I'm worried about the championship, not much the record. It would be nice to break the record, but uh, I want to get that third number one plate. All right, good job, Rick. Thanks, Dave. Taking a look at the top ten now in the overall. Carmichael Sellers, Ramsey on the podium. And McCormick for that second place finish moved all the way up to ninth. Let's go to Davey. Jason, so close. What a fantastic ride. So close. Then Carmichael came. Yeah, you know, I got out strong out of the gate from the outside. And uh, I was aggressive in the first turn. And then I just focused on what I had to do. And got out front, checked out. Kept a good pace. And then I, I think I let the fans get to me because I did hear some cheers. I didn't think they were for me, but I knew Carmichael was on his way up. But, uh, hey, I rode strong. And I'm proud. First moto, I, it was a tough deal. Two crashes, banners, all that. But, you know, I wanted my second moto win. My bike blew up in Bud's Creek. But, uh... I'm happy, man. But the injured talent bowling in the hospital with a couple of broken ribs. Ricky Carmichael now has things pretty much his own way. A 69-point lead with very few races left. He's only three wins away from that magic mark of 25 career, 125 motocross victories set by Mark Barnett.